Even though I'm 20, I have traveled quite a lot, thanks to my parents, and I have seen different customs, different food diets, and different people. Hello gamers, my name is KK, and today we are completing the champs mode on the balance map. This one is gonna be very, very simple with the minimum amount of towers and no micro whatsoever. We are gonna barely even use any abilities and just sit down, relax, and get some snacks and enjoy the video. Guys, but before this, press the like button right now and subscribe to the channel so that we can get over this very quickly and get to the meat and potatoes. Let's go. So, guys, today Sauda is one of the best heroes in the game. It's no secret for anyone. And this is the hero we're gonna be using to, uh, in this walkthrough. Uh, why? Because first, Sauda is definitely the best hero for balance because this map was introduced to the game when the Sauda was uh, introduced as well. And usually when developers create the maps, along with the heroes, they intend for the people to play with the new hero on the new map. It was the case with the balance, it was the case with the Mesa, when they introduced Mesa and Etienne and many other maps. Also, for example, the Flooded Valley and Brickle. It is how it is. And this was no exception. Sauda is very good in the center spot of this map. So we begin with Sauda and we also place the Wizzy Boy and the Sniper. Why do we need the Sniper? Because we want to snipe the LEDs later on. Here it's gonna be so <laughs> funny because, look, uh, we will use very few towers. I'm usually used to be using at least 10 towers, but we, if wanted, if we wanted to, we could win this with four towers only. But uh, since the later game is not going to be as reliable, if we were to use the fewest amount of towers, because we did complete this uh, game with the four towers on champs mode, heroes included. So it was uh, Prince of Darkness. No, yes, one, one uh, Sauda, one Prince of Darkness, and then second Prince of Darkness, because it was co-op and MAD. This was enough to complete all the levels. But here we're gonna choose the different path slightly. So we also place the second sniper, and I also upgrade him to the full metal jacket. The key point in these two snipers is to snipe all the strong balloons, so that Sauda doesn't have to peel all the layers all by herself. Also, the spots for the snipers are thought out pretty well, because the snipers are supposed to be targeting the opposite direction of their placement. So the right sniper is gonna be targeting the entrance in the left side of the game, of the map, and vice, vice versa. Then, Wizzy Boy, we up upgrade him to the Wall of Fire as soon as we can do this. And we also need the snipers to snipe the purple balloons, because Wall of Fire is really strong, as we all know, but it's useless against the purple balloons. Also, you need to replicate the spot I'm using with the Wizzy Boy, because here, if we place the wizard in the top right section of the center compartment of the map, he will drop his wall of fire in the good spot where it will hit the center balloons almost always. So it's just the good spot and you could also place it near the Sauda in the right or left section, but I don't recommend it because we're gonna place the village over, here, over there. Here we are placing one more sniper. Okay, I take my words back, it's <laughs> much safer um, walkthrough than the least towers possible. Here I make it as quick and as let's call it painless as possible. Good. Now we place the boat. It's gonna be 3 to 0 boat eventually. And these snipers are gonna be different. But, you know, I don't think... No, no, no. This, no, this, is, this particular run is not a, um, a low count tower run. It's more of the most convenient run. I would call it this way. And 
Okay, we are gonna get the destroyer and annihilate Moab and everything is gonna go very smoothly because Sauda has camo detection from level 2, she has good pierce, good attack speed and everything is doing alright. Okay, yeah, so today I'm gonna tell you a story. A story about the food. So, let's begin with a bit of my background. I am Ukrainian. Ukraine is the country in the Eastern Europe. Uh, it's not the most developed country, such as Great Britain, uh, Germany, etc., but it's not the third world country either. So it's a developing country in, in the mid between the US, for example, and let's say Pakistan. <laughs> um, we are usually used to eat the really let's call it plain food if we compare ukrainian dishes to the end overall uh, diet of ukrainians to the rest of the world we don't eat much spicy food we don't eat uh, much like really salty food we don't eat uh, anything let's call it super special because of the origins of our nation etc um, we were Let's call it conditioned to eat the simple food it's tasty but we don't eat much fish we don't eat much uh, meat we eat, we have the pretty balanced diet all around the food vegetables fruits meat etc and we are ukrainians russians and all these slavic nations are also <laughs> famous for eating the porridges i i know that uh people in the US and for other first world countries are not used to eat the porridges, except the rice, of course, but uh, in our country it is very common thing to eat the buckwheat porridge, the wheat porridge, the oats, oatmeal, uh, but oats, oats are kind of popular in the Western countries, but uh, there is a difference in the oats and I would say, like, for, for my personal taste, our oats are better, even though I'm not a big fan of oats in general. Okay, here we upgraded, we placed the village, it's Jungle Drums Village. We also, it's, remember not to upgrade the village to the discount village, it's just the 200 at this stage, because we will most likely need it to upgrade to the MAB later. And now we are saving up for the 0 to 4 wizard after we upgrade the 0 to 4 sniper. Good. So we have slightly different food traditions uh, in comparison to the other nations because I've been in a lot of countries in this world. Even though I'm 20, I have traveled quite a lot thanks to my parents and I have seen different customs, different food diets and different people. So I can compare the Asian, for example, food with the our food, with the Western European food, with the US food, Canadian food, etc. Uh, this is why it's pretty interesting discussion. So uh, most people think that uh, like overall the spicy food is popular only in Asia, <laughs> like real spicy, because it's part of the also the how the nations developed etc because in asia um let's call it like 200 years ago people and like this is the thousands of years long uh, traditions and the history where people needed to survive using eating the food they have uh, in the uh, immediate vicinity which means that uh, in the tropical climate the food gets, um, how is it called, gets wasted very quickly. Uh, you cannot afford to eat the raw food there, you cannot uh, afford to waste food, etc. And in order to make the food as healthy as possible and to kill most of the bacteria in the meat in the other vegetables, f fruits, etc., in Asia, it, is, it has become really popular to eat the food with, with the spices. Because if the spices such as pepper and all the different types of peppers, because there are thousands of them, and other, uh, how to call it, spice ingredients, they kill the bacteria in your food and make it uh, possible to eat. Uh, there is even the cuisine that incorporates the only spicy food and 
spicy lovers say that it's these these dishes will not be as tasty if there were no they weren't as spicy so this is an old tradition and it's kind of interesting however for the most people uh, in the world this is gonna be very unhealthy if you are conditioned to eat the food uh, the spicy food from the childhood you're gonna be dealing with it just fine however if you did not eat much spicy food it's gonna harm you it's gonna harm you significantly it's like drinking uh, a, a bottle of vodka when you never dr drunk anything in your life uh, it will ruin you <laughs> uh, why is that because when you are eating the it's it's really similar to the alcohol because what alcohol does to you of course it ruins your health remember this each time you drink alcohol it's bad for you but what how bad and why is it bad that's the real question and i can answer so what alcohol does to you, it's it burns the how to call it I don't remember the medical terminology in English. I know it's Russian, but I don't care. So it basically the uh, it burns your throat. Let's call it this way, because when you drink alcohol, it, depending of course on the amount of alcohol inside the beverages, you can uh, burn your throat and. First, it's, it's gonna become warm. I know that a lot of kids watch me don't drink. It's it's not worth it. I personally don't drink at all. So make your own conclusions uh, it burns your throat slightly and the more percentage of alcohol there is the worse the effects you feel on your throat and stomach uh, the same effect goes from the spicy food so it burns your but spicy food also burns the mouth because with most of the alcohols you don't savor it that much except the uh, soft almost soft beverages like wine or beer uh, that, that don't burn you at all the harder liquor such as like whiskey cognac uh, vodka etc uh, you are gonna burn your throat eventually so the same effect goes from the spicy food and it's pretty interesting that if you did not eat spicy food before it will ruin you first uh, the, it's, it's kind of funny for the people who are used to spicy food, but if you're not used to spicy food, it will hurt you when you eat it, it will hurt you when you digest, and it will hurt you in the toilet <laughs> when you're gonna uh, let everything out. It's gonna burn all your body from the beginning to the end. So it's not recommended for the people who are not used to this to eat spicy food. It's the slow process of getting used to this that can be healthy to to you and if you are not let's say um, going up with this schedule and if you are not uh, trying to condition yourself slowly to the spicy food you're gonna regret it and it will da damage your health it could even uh, let's call it like damage y your stomach to such uh, in such way that you're not gonna be able to eat a lot of types of food and it will it can cause the permanent damage so it's very it's kind of dangerous thing and you need to take it very very slowly okay and why am i talking about the spicy food because i used to be the p person who likes spicy food and uh, now i'm kind of in the in between and i also used to be the person who loathes the spicy food um uh, why am i in between right now because usually I don't eat the spicy food at this stage in my life, I don't want it. Uh, but I also think that it can be useful and spicy food, spices in general, they enhance the flavor if they were, they are not, if you don't overextend with those. Because the main problem of extremely spicy food is that if you eat it, it becomes like a shattered glass. So. If you ever, if you ever seen it in the movies, etc., where the main character like uh, it's it's the horror movies. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Oculus, the name of the movie, where the main character has the glass in their mouth. Let's put it this way. I'm not gonna go into the details. Uh, it's just this feeling uh, of the food that just hurts you and you feel no flavor. Why do we don't feel flavor if the food is too spicy? It's very simple, because uh, we are getting uh, our 
how to call it. I try to simplify everything so that we don't use that many scientific terms. Let's call it your tongue. Like, if you look in the mirror into your tongue, you're gonna see the tiny uh, dots on your tongue. These things receive the, the taste of the food through... First food uh, needs to be covered in the saliva, and then when you chew it, these tiny, let's call it bowls, they receive the flavor. Of course, if you know the terminology, you can share it with the others uh, in the comments. But I try to make it as simple as possible. Uh, so these things get burnt if you eat the spicy food or you drink the hard liquor. It's just the reality. And the more you eat and drink these things, the worse it becomes for your tongue. And the less flavor you can feel. So basically, the people who are really into the spicy food, they can barely feel any uh, taste of the food if it's not spicy. And you can you could mention it, for example, uh, if you ask the person who is really into the spicy food, that they cannot eat this food without spices, most likely, just because they don't feel the flavor. Okay, and now that we have this understood, look, uh, I neglected the spicy food, let's say, that this way, because I wanted to feel a lot of flavor, and if you don't eat the spicy food at all, your tongue becomes very sensitive, and you can feel the different flavors that you uh, couldn't feel otherwise. It's a pretty interesting thing, and you just don't experience this, these flavors if you are into the spicy food. Okay, first let's get to the get back to the game a bit. So I have really the ultra juggernaut here, I have really the 3-2-0 village that, uh, with the juggernaut in range. I also placed the uh, alchemist 4-0-1 that alk buffs the juggernaut. Juggernaut is amazing in this map because we have a lot of uh, walls for the jugger balls to bounce off. And here now we are saving up for the Prince of Darkness. Just chill at this stage and you're gonna see that Juggernaut is amazing against the mass blimps if you have these kinds of maps. Also, use the ability of Sauda whenever you see fit and level 10 ability I used it at least 10 times in this walkthrough and you could have seen that it's very use useful. Level 3 ability, spam it whenever. Okay, and here I was sizing up whether I should go with the... Uh, 0 to 5 cannon or not and I decided against it because the ultra jog is just so damn strong Some people completed this map with just Sauda and ultra jog juggernaut. So Make your own conclusions. Okay So I tried to stay without spicy food and it was also not the best idea because at the end of the day we need the variety in food and I d discovered this very recently so I Ate the added the garlic to my regular diet. So I added the garlic. I, I think I ate the potatoes and meat and potatoes, just basically. <laughs> uh, so I added the garlic, and it was so freaking tasty. I know that it's it's a very ordinary thing in the Asian countries to eat the uh, most of the t meat meats meat types with the garlic and ginger. Uh, grind it or cut and then uh, you can add it to the pan and fry uh, your meat with this one or and you can also add soy sauce and you can also boil it in this you can add to this to the soup etc but the gist is that garlic is really really good and you if you mix it with ginger it becomes even better and I thought okay I want to try the garlic in in the grain there is the Let's call it custom uh, dish where you for for some for people who are not from Ukraine it's gonna sound a bit awkward uh, because we have the tradition of eating the pork fat. Uh, it's called salo, and we are eating it with the garlic. It's really tasty for me, but not all, all the people can uh, eat this dish because uh, for the people who don't. Uh, who haven't ever tried it, it's like a jelly, but uh, with no flavor. However, it's like, I would say it's a better bacon, if we compare it to the f other food types. So, um, 
I ate this food and it was really something. And I thought, wow. Just, I was getting used to this food diet and I thought just one slice of garlic could change everything. So my story with garlic is just really something. Then I thought, okay, if I overextend my res my okay, receptors, this is how it's called, so my tongue balls will burn, my tongue will become insensitive. So I figured I should eat the garlic, because garlic is also, as we mentioned earlier, this it's the spicy food, uh, and it destroys all the bacteria in food. Even though we don't have the bacteria in most of the food types right now, um, it's still healthy to eat some garlic in your diet. But, uh, guys, never ever eat something that your doctor said you not to eat. Because there are a lot of eggs, uh, I, I'm like, there are a lot of fo fake experts on the internet that tell you eat this, eat that, or and you will become healthier, you will become thinner, you will become stronger, etc. It's all bullshit. If you have any kind of problems with your health, don't listen to people on the YouTube. Only listen to your doctor who knows your situation, specific situation, who knows what are your problems and how your organism works. Don't listen to any advice except the authorized professionals. It's, rem it's very important. For example, for some people, spicy food is just, it's not worth it. You can't eat it at all. And it's fine. You don't need to eat the spicy food if you can't eat it with because of the medical prescription. It's just fine. Think with your head a bit and make your own conclusions. But I have no problems with my health, so I decided to mix in some uh, garlic and it be turned out to be very, very good. So when you add just tiny pieces, basically you can have one piece of garlic and then chop this piece into 10 pieces. Then when you, that's how I do it. When you uh, eat some food, you just have one of these small pieces and you chew it together with all the food and it adds the f like strong vibrant flavor to the dishes you are eating uh it's really really solid and i never expected this because look we all know that there are some types of food and what they do but when you don't eat some food for a long time you don't experience this kind of feeling because uh, when I lived in Canada, I ate pretty much the same thing over and over again. I ate the... My main diet was to eat some uh, porridge. It could be buckwheat porridge, it could be rice, or it could be the pasta with meat and vegetables. Uh, meat could be the pork, could be the beef, could be chicken. And sometimes the different types of meat, such as lamb, etc. Uh, and the vegetables. So it's pretty balanced diet, but even though it could be like the most well-balanced diet in the world, the best diet, it still gets repetitive. And when you add these tiny, let's say, add-ons, when you have this mod in your diet, it becomes much, much tastier and you get to experience the new emotions while eating food. So this is what I experienced. For the round 100, we upgrade the preempt for now its first strike capability. We bless it and then we use all the abilities we can. As simple as that, and we destroy this bad balloon. No problemo. Boom. Okay, I like. I kind of like this story time, uh, even though it's kind of messy in the beginning. Don't judge me too harsh. I haven't told the stories in English for a year or so, <laughs> so I'm gonna get better at this very very soon. Okay, guys, press the like or dislike button right now, depending what you think. And if you have no problems with your health, eat some garlic with your food, and it will make your taste, uh, make food taste much more vibrant and tasty. See ya in the next one.